fucking uh, Romeo. <clears throat> I know this is weird. It's it's like weird for me to sit down and talk to you like this too. Oh. You know, but I mean, it's you know. That's cool. Whatever you need, you know. You know. You want to plug in? You want to plug in the pig nose? Yeah. weird too but like it's it's uh it's actually just like a so actually the notes i'm hitting is it's because i'm pinging out the harmonics with this instead of it sounding like Da, da, da. Sounds like so you're hitting E and D notes and hitting a an A yeah a, a, a harmonic. harmonic at the twelfth fret. Sounds weird. Yeah, I well, I don't use it for that. <laughs> That's all I guess. It's just a subtle little thing, you know. Uh -huh. I don't probably even know what the fuck's going uh -huh. on. But. What's that What's that one little riff you said you liked in uh, oh, that oh. Clever Rock? That See, one I, don't even know how I, I don't even know how I did that. Just something like that. Yeah, that's so good. I don't even know how I did it. <laughs> It's nice, that, 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 it's nice that little thing. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, it sounds good on there. Yeah. You know, I haven't quite been able to duplicate it since. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you shit on a record, man. It's just a freak little thing. Uh huh. You know. So a lot of that stuff you were doing was kind of one Very again one take things and Very even mistake things. type things. Yeah. What about I, I love mistakes because you can never redo them exactly mm -hmm. the same. You mm -hmm. never can. They're just freak things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, some good shit comes out, you know? When, when did you guys first go in the studio? When did you start working? Oh, God. <clears throat> it's hard for me to tell you now. I mean, it seems like it's taken so long, but it's all been the, the red tape stuff, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, the actual recording, we did all the music in four days. Really? Yeah. Except for the acoustic song. We did that, you know, at the very end. So I guess we were waiting for the rain, <laughs> which you can barely hear anyway. But uh, the actual music took four days, and then uh, the week after that, we sang for four days. And stop that for a second, I'll tell you why. <clears throat> so now you know, know why, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, so these are all tunes you've like worked out, what, the last on the road and stuff? Uh, the last see, the piano song, uh, I played the piano on the record. And uh, while we're with Strexa uh, and the Cradle Will Rock, and the Cradle Will Rock, everybody else gets along. But um, we were on tour, you know, we were touring, doing a bus tour last year, and uh, we sat down and said, What are we gonna do different on the next track? So I said, well, What the hell? I'll go out and buy a little world here and plank on it, and uh, came up with the music for that. And uh, that was first take, by the way, was it really? Yeah, except for the guitar overdubs I did later. Cause I can't play piano and guitar at the same time. <laughs> I guess I <laughs> no one else can play guitar, so. So what are you going to do live? Uh, Mike's going to play it. Because <laughs> since I just won Best Rock Guitarist, my brother says, don't play piano. Don't be a Sammy Davis Jr., you know, master, <laughs> or a jack of all trades, master of none. Just stick the guitar. <clears throat> so Mike is going to play a key bass, like the doors you use, yeah. you know, those roads, key bass things, and a world to piano. We all pretty much play keyboards, but I, I did write the song and play it on the record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else is on there that's new um, <clears throat> for Van Halen? Uh, let me see. Where's my list? I'll tell you the songs that, that were written before. Cradle And the Cradle of Rock was brand new. Everybody Wants Some was brand new. Romeo Delight was brand new. Uh, 
could just be magic it's brand new and the intro and shit uh, Lost Control we reworked it was always Lost Control we actually wrote at the same time remember last time I did an interview with you I told you that I wrote like three songs right. making fun of punk rock uh -huh. well, Lost Control we talking about love and uh, there was one other one that I wrote all at the same time you know and uh, so we changed Lost Control a little bit so it wouldn't sound as punk and uh, Whiskey was an old song and we decided to do that change that a bit with a uh, um, the acoustic intro don't want to it down yeah it's a little old blues you know. uh, everything else is new it's only actually two songs in here that were worked out before we went in the studio mm -hmm. the rest is just done now mm -hmm. can you run down some of the tunes talking about guitars and effects and uh, solo things uh, well, let me tell you about the piano song first, okay? Because that's a rather unusual sound for a piano. I just blaze it through my my little pedal board and my Marshalls, and uh, the noise that you hear in the beginning is just a uh, uh, MXR flanger and banging on the lower register of the piano. In uh, doing in, in doing that, I busted one of the keys on my piano. <laughs> but you know, for better or worse, it came out on the record. What's the song about? Uh, it's about a a kid, you know, you might say deprived of rock and roll, but mm -hmm. anyway, and the creator will rock, no matter uh -huh. what happens to him, he's still going to rock, you know, and uh, everybody wants them, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> Some money, of course. Everybody wants them, I want them too, <laughs> be it drugs, sex, whatever, you know, and uh, fools. I Live With Fools is about uh, living with your parents. You oh, to, is, it, is that the full title, I Live With Fools? Uh, well, we shortened it to Fools on the record. It used to be called I Live With Fools, and you know, that's what we originally came up with. And uh, you know, it's, it's a song about living with your parents and uh, going through the houses at school. It starts out, I don't want to go to school, you know. <laughs> don't want to put up with your golden rules and shit like that. Romeo Delight. As a matter of fact, I write all music, but sometimes I just Dave. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, uh, well, a Romeo Delight is a, uh, you know, a beautiful chick. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Romeo's Delight. Right. You're the Romeo and there's your Delight, right. which is a beautiful chick. Uh, Loss of control is pretty much self-explanatory. It sounds crazed. Loss of control, out of control. Uh, whiskey, I think, uh, I don't know if, let's actually take your whiskey home. It's about you living with a chick and she's sick and tired of you falling down and breaking <laughs> your face and, and you being coming home drunk all the time, you know. So the chorus goes, I think you're headed for a whole lot of trouble when you take your whiskey home. Because the old ladies won't be Joe. <laughs> Simple Rhyme is kind of a change for us, too. It has a 12-string intro and the quiet part in the metal. It's a lot of harmonies and stuff. It's, uh, you know, I want to be yours in a Simple Rhyme, another love song. Mm -hmm. The band was a little uh, intoxicated at the time of that one? No, that was Good This Be Magic. Oh. <laughs> Good This Be Magic is the, the acoustic song where we sound like a bunch of drunk fool... Uh, Sailors just getting into town, you know. Actually, the hook of the the, the album title is in that. Mm -hmm. Better save the women and children first. But uh, it's not the title track. Uh, what is the album called? Uh, women and Children First. But we decided to call the song <laughs> Could This Be Magic? So all the program directors wouldn't play that song <laughs> first if we call it Women and Children First. <laughs> and that's about it. Growth. Growth. Uh, we were actually going to make a song out of that, but we didn't have the time on the record. So Ted just said, why don't we just use it for a, a small tease for next mm -hmm. year, you know, and mm -hmm. put it on the leader or whatever you call it, the last couple of seconds mm -hmm. of the record right for your needle lifts off the mm -hmm. record. And, uh, you know, we'll probably make a song out of it. It'll appear on the next one. There's, like, lots of little intro bits that really don't have anything to do with the song really yeah little like like oh yeah Tora Tora is the the 
in introduction to Last Control, which uh, is kind of appropriately titled. It sounds like, you know, a Spitfire taking off or something. How was that done? Uh, I did it with uh, with one of those Floyd Rose vibrato bar things. Uh, if you have a strider, I can show you. Yeah. <laughs> It actually almost sounded the same forward as it does backwards. It really? just gives the decay instead of going uh down it went yeah, right on groove line. So you you reverse the tape. See, my guitar goes way down low. Uh -huh. It goes to the point where you don't hear a note. Huh. It just goes this one go down as well. Let's take it backwards. So, it gets to the point where there's no tone and the string at all. It just sounds like a uh, like that. And then the combination went like <laughs> What was that one tune when you did your little finger thing and you mentioned it was kind of a, of a missed note but you still left it in there? What tune is that? Oh, uh, I live with full. I don't even know how I did it. I haven't sat down and relearned it. It was really a freak thing. It sounds weird. It sounds like I'm slipping, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things you just can't, you know, I said, wait a minute, what is that? I wasn't sure whether I liked it or not, but then since I couldn't exactly figure out how I did it, I said, yeah, I like it. <laughs> so is the Strat still the main guitar on the album? Yeah, it's the only one I use. Oh wait, I used the 335. Oh yeah, I used the 335 for the solo and uh, and the Cradle of Rock. Really? Yeah. For some reason, when I play 335, I can really, you know, play as fast. Huh. You know, I'll do that that kind of. You know. It's just a different feel for mm -hmm. guitar, you know. It's just. Yeah, but I, I didn't really freak out on the bar as much as I usually do, just so it would sound a little different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got a couple of new uh, guitars. Yeah, two beautiful old Pauls. It's cost me a bundle and a half today. Yeah. But I'll got that's a nice one right on it. What years are they? Uh, the the Tiger Striper, what do you call it, Flame Top one is a 59. The, uh, 59 was Boss Dan, and this one's a 58. You'll be playing those live? Uh, I'll be playing this one, the 58, because that one's too nice. I don't want to lose it. Some days to do that Oh, if I swear. Page, I've been ripped off. Same exact thing, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. A 59. So is that still the main guitar live? Yeah. Uh, I just had one. Uh, <clears throat> I had uh, Lynn Ellsworth make me a strap body, which is like twice as thick as this. Just think of a ball, yeah. real fat, made out of mahogany, and uh, I'm in the process of painting it. Like, like this part right here goes to about there. Mm -hmm. It's real heavy, but it gets a lot of tone. Because using the uh, Floyd Rose tremolo thing, which I like and I don't like, it has its advantages and disadvantages, but I've gotten used to using it live, so that's pretty much what I do use live. Do you have that on... on I have it on, on one guitar not, so far. Not, not the Strat you've used all along, not the no, painted one. No, no. It's going to be on the new one. <clears throat> and uh, for some reason, his, his, uh, his tremolo, the metal it's made out of, is real brittle sounding. I've tried everything trying to get a tone out of the damn thing, and I couldn't. You know, I had it on one guitar. I just couldn't get a sound out of it, mm -hmm. so uh, I had Lynn Ellsworth making her body twice as thick, hoping that that would make up for the brilliance of the metal. Because that's why that's why I prefer 
original old Strat tail pieces just like what you have here. For some reason, they get a lot more tone than all this uh, other garbage, you know, mighty might brass stuff. Now, brass, I don't know, man, it just doesn't seem to work for me. Huh. I can't get a tone out of it. For some reason, the old stuff's just the best. It really manages to get the sound I like. What songs would you play the Les Paul on, you know? Uh, probably the piano song. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe, maybe Romeo, because there's no vibrato in that one. I don't know, I'll see. <laughs> So the new tour will be mainly uh, the new album. Um, yeah, it's it's actually very difficult for us to figure out what to play now. You have three albums to choose from. It would seem easy, you know, to pick, but actually it's hard to pick. Mm -hmm. You don't know which ones to do. You got so many of them. I mean, looking at it now, that three albums worth of material that was in play. I look I look at it, look at it, I look down and see how we pulled it off the first year <laughs> with only eight songs, you know, to play. But uh. But uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll do at least we'll do more than half of this new album. Mm -hmm. We'll do what's that last? I know we'll do and the cradle will rock. Everybody wants some Romeo lost control, super line, and we're debating on whether we're going to do this. could this be magic, which is an acoustic song. Mm -hmm. But I think we might do that instead of Ice Cream Man, yeah, because you know it's nice to have an acoustic song mm -hmm. in the set. Oh, you play slide on one song. Yeah, that could just be magic. Right. First time I ever played slide. <laughs> we were a bit drunk, and the guys go, it doesn't sound right, Ed. Why don't you try playing slide? I'm going, uh-oh. <laughs> I've never played slide, guys. They go, just fake it. I just played it regular guitar tuning. I didn't return. You know, I mean, a lot of people, I guess, tune especially for slide. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how how to tune it that way. I just played it normal. So I, I, I pick, I play normal plus slide. In the song, like the mallet up. I'm gonna play. And then I play slide, you know. Mm -hmm. I play half and half. Yeah. So, you, you happy with the album? Yeah, I love it. <clears throat> I think it's, uh, I think it's our best one yet, just because it's it's got more variety. It's not too guitar guitar dominated. It's not too. Uh, it's just got a little bit of everything on it. Mm -hmm. It's got acoustic. It's got piano on it. It's got the ball, the bun busting rock. You know, it's got it all. Do you think people listen to Van Halen albums to hear Eddie Van Halen play guitar? Though? <clears throat> I'm sure they listen to it for for the overall thing for everything. But I don't think uh, I don't think they listen to it just for my playing. But I think there's enough of my playing on there to satisfy them. Mm -hmm. you know. What's it like when you uh, the guitar player for? Uh, <coughs> rush. <clears throat> Something I never ex thought of, to tell you the truth. I remember when, uh, uh, I guess around November, or late no, in September, around that month, I started thinking to myself, oh yeah, this is usually the time they have the poll. And what I was going to do is I was going to vote for Alan, Alan Holdsworth. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> I was too late at picking up an issue to vote for anybody. And all of a sudden we get off tour and I get a telegram in the mail. I didn't at all, I swear to God, I had no fucking idea that I would win. You know, especially because Zeppelin just put out a new album. I figured Jimmy Page, no matter how bad he played on it, he would still get it. You know, but I managed to get it, which, you know, I'm proud of and surprised, totally surprised me. Is it putting pressure on you to be the... It's, it seems like it would, but it doesn't, because the way I've gotten to where I've gotten is just by doing what I do, mm -hmm. without worrying about, oh, I've got to do this, i gotta, I got to make sure I get better, you know. You know, I don't really think I get better, I just change, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, so you can only get so fast, you can only playing so much. <laughs> you know, it's a matter of change more, I think, than getting better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doing different riffs, different little noises. You know, just noises on this record that people probably wouldn't even know what it is, like like the this. And um, what else? What's know. What's the jungle song? Everybody wants some. You do some at the beginning. Yeah, you do yeah. some all kinds of little. <laughs> and with a loud amp, you get feedback. 
So you have to do it in what now? I'm rubbing the palm of my hand <clears throat> right by the bridge. Not too hard, but so, so you get kind of a cello effect. Mm -hmm. And then with this finger, it's loud, you feel it. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> this and that. Have you heard that on there? <laughs> it's so funny. I gotta play that for you. <clears throat> so again, there aren't uh, <clears throat> that many overdubs on the album. Uh, let me see. Well, I overdubbed the solo and created a lot. Because uh, I can't play guitar and piano at the same time. Everybody wants some solos overdubbed because it's... Uh, Melodic, mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I prefer to overdub set melodic solos rather than than a, like on the first album. What I did is I would do the solo and overdub rhythm track, like you say, really? yeah. If it was a, like a melodic solo, uh -huh. I would play the solo <clears throat> on the basic track and then overdub a rhythm. But uh, this time Ted just thought it'd be it would the flow it would flow better mm -hmm. if I just continue to play rhythm all the way through. You see, almost that's the only song. Hmm. Only two. Fools, Romeo. Oh no, at the very end of Fools, I overdub the guitar, which is very, just uh, the, the one guitar, the bass, basic guitar is playing this. And the other guitar just, you know, just a little scat mm -hmm. shit like that. Mm -hmm. I overdubbed that because mm -hmm. I couldn't play it both at the same time. But that's it. So there's actually three overdubs, guitar. So there's no, uh, like, one... Everybody so Wants Them, End of Fools, <clears throat> and Cradle of Rock. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. And Simple Rhyme, Overdub, 12-string. That's it. Had you played much 12-string before? Oh, uh, no. It was a hassle and a half tune in the damn thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, man. Yeah. You get these funky SIR Rickenbacker jobs, you know. With half, you know, six month old strings on them, rusted and shit. Oh, was that an electric 12 string? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sounds acoustic almost. Yeah, I just played it real quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was no strictly oh, solo. I, I, I might it. It was one of those uh, F hole Rickenbackers. I guess they all are. It was a hollow body. Uh huh. So I played, no, I played it direct and mic'd it. Really? mic the guitar. So it sounds like an acoustic guitar, yeah. but it still has kind of an electric sound mm -hmm. to it. Really clean sounding. Yeah. yeah. There was no strictly solo songs, like Eruption or... No. <clears throat> I did a small, a small introduction to Fools, you know, which is a little guitar freak out for mm -hmm. a couple seconds, you know. <laughs> the fulfilled by guitar freaks. <laughs> yeah. So Ted and Don obviously worked on this album. Oh, yeah. Did a great job, I think. Job. They must be used to the Van Halen system of madness by now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like a breath of fresh air for them. Yeah, maybe it is. They, oh, I know it is. They, they work and all that real kind of... Yeah, everything else they do is very, very middle of the road to, me to mellow, you know. We're the, I think we're the only rock... We are the only rock thing that they produce. And... Uh, even out of rock bands, I think we lean to the extreme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we probably like lost control. I mean, who would fucking do a song <laughs> that crazy? You know, <clears throat> Nick Trout only showed up that one. He just said, "Fuck, I don't care how that comes out. It's just gonna be on there. I love it." You know. Yeah. So the albums do out when? <clears throat> um, early March. It was supposed to be out end of February, but we again we got in the houses with getting the right color for the album cover and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, I think it'll be out, I think, two days before we leave on tour. We're leaving on tour on the 14th of March, and uh, it'll be another 10-month. 10-month tour? Yeah. It's like the last two years. Or actually, the first year was longer than that. It's about 11 months. Where will you be going? Uh, everywhere. Hopefully this time. Last year, we wanted to go to South America, too. But uh, we never had time. So this year, we're going to do all of the states, Canada, Europe, England. We want to go to Scandinavia this year. Or as a matter of fact, it's already set up. We'd like to hit Australia. 
we can do Japan, of course. We've been there already three times, I think. And uh, we're trying to we're trying to squeeze in uh, South America and Australia, just you know, for our sake. Mm -hmm. Say somewhere different for a change, you know. Mm -hmm. Get sick of the Missoula's all the time. <laughs> well, actually, not you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're one band who will play all these off-the-wall places because no one else will, mm -hmm. you know? And we do care about our fans. Hello? Speaking. How you doing? Yeah, I am. <clears throat> what I was saying was that, you know, most of your big bands, when they get to the point of selling a couple million albums or so, they stop. All they do is the major cities. And I, I can see why, well, some of them, like with us, it would be very, very easy for us to just play the major cities because our production's gotten so big mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of halls won't even allow you to put that big rig in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a ceiling won't hold it or this and that, but we're going to do it anyway. You know, I mean, this year's production is going to be insane. A lot of people thought last year's was big. And this This year... I, mean, I remember they made a big stink about Queen's 500 lights. You know, we're going to have close to 800 lights in our truss this year. You know, you know four trucks, four 45-foot semis bringing it around. And uh, my guitar setup is equal to 20 Marshall cabinets, like 80 12 inch speakers, you know. And uh, Al's drum side, drum, oh, his drums are unbelievable this year. you got to see them. They're uh there are two bass drums put together again, so the actual four bass drums. And you got this, uh, what do you call it, air conditioning duct stuff. And connect them together. It looks like accordion stuff. <laughs> and painted it black. And it's an all white set, Ludwig set. And in between the bass drums, he's got like that much of this accordion stuff. So you can turn the bass drums. <laughs> and they're long as hell. They go out like that at a, at a, at a like a, you know, I don't know how you call it, just at an angle like that. It, it looks bizarre, man. It looks so weird. I mean, how he comes up with those fucking ideas and makes his drums look weird is beyond me. But it looks great. I mean, that's a definite for the drum museum, if there ever is one, you know. Okay. How many people do you have working with you on the road? Mm, I'm 26. That's not including us four. Mm -hmm. We have so much equipment, you know, but still we're going out of our way to play, to play all the smaller, not really smaller halls, but we're playing, the, probably the smallest place we'll play is 8,000 seater. Mm -hmm. Just to get out to the kids, you know, who, who rarely get rock and roll into their town, mm -hmm. otherwise they have to drive 200 miles to go see a concert, who wants to do that? Can so you, we'll, we'll bring it to them. Can you make money in towns like that? Oh, uh, like sure. Okay. Actually, you know, we're not, we're not... We're not out to make money on tour, you know? I mean, we throw our all into the tour, and as long as we break even, as long as we don't lose money, we'll, we'll do it. We rarely make money, really, to mm -hmm. Make money from the records? Yeah, well, <laughs> we're trying to. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of these big bands, they do, you know, not to name any names, but... Uh, Pink Floyd, you know, what's this shit, a one show, yeah. and one thing, or whatever, yeah. you know, they picked two places in the whole goddamn continent to show this shit, and look at all the people that deprived of it, you know, we probably want to see it, mm -hmm. so we're just going to use every penny we got, <laughs> take it everywhere we can, just for the kids, yeah, and they go crazy in these out of the way places, because mm -hmm. they rarely have rock and roll, they rarely get shows in their city. So you're, st you're still as exuberant now as you were the first day I met you. I just, I just, I'm just excited. It's like we're starting all over again. Yeah. It's fun. I'm ready. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to go out again. Go crazy. You guys have your own sound system backstage, don't you? Oh, you can God. You two of, of uh, those cabinets or something? Uh, we, we're using two of Mike's old bass bands, <laughs> which have an 18-inch, you know. I mean, these <laughs> things are loud. It's an, it's actually, uh, it, it would be appropriate to use for a PA system in a, in a club, 
like the whiskey size. It's like a whiskey PA system. It's loud. I mean, you hear it in the hall while the opening act is playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you know, our theory with that is just like my my guitar amps. I like to turn them all the way up, and so they won't blow up. I mean, if the knob goes to ten. You should be able to turn it up to ten. <laughs> Last year we had this thing built, and we're saying, "Now can we run it at 10? We're going, "Sure, go ahead." The first thing we did, it blew out. So this time we could charge ourselves. Said, "This is what we want." Instead of design something for us, we told them what we wanted. Mm -hmm. and this thing kicks ass. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like it's almost like putting your head right in front of a concert PA stack. You know, it's all the highs, the mids, the lows. They'll probably reproduce the tape better than the studio will. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you pick the bands that you tour? Uh, <clears throat> actually, the bands that we pick won't play with us. Nobody will play with us. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's hard, you know. Come one, come all. We're, we're not afraid of anybody. It's just like nobody wants to play with us. They're afraid. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year, every band that played with us got bottled off somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Which really freaked me out. Our first show last year was in Fresno. Fabulous Poodles opened. Well, they would, that would happen to them anywhere. Well, I did. I kind of liked them. Did you? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I, I mean, I, I've never seen them before, but I liked that song, Mirror Stars. Uh -huh. song. You know, they had a good record. I never expected that to happen. What happened to them? Uh -huh. Everybody, you know, got booted off somewhere along the line. Where it got to the point where we didn't know what to do. You know, we just said, anyway, please open for us. We don't want to pull a, a Zeppelin and just play two and a half hours by ourselves. Mm -hmm. the, you know, kids get tired of that. They want a little variety. Hmm. You had some problems with Derringer, too, didn't you? Yeah. I don't even want to talk about that. You know, it's funny because I talked to you and you'd mention that, you know. And, and yeah, Rick used to do those kinds of things, you know. But uh, I did an interview with him a while ago, and he was talking about guitar players, you know, and I said, well, who do you listen to? He says, I listen to everybody, you know. He says, you know, Eddie Van Halen is fantastic, you know. And, uh, so I don't know if there's any animosity. But I mean, I can understand that kind of um, thing, you know, happening. Yeah, you know, I didn't know he liked that. He never said anything to me. He just acted like an asshole when really? I talked to him. Well, you know, it's, I mean, for him to play <laughs> like me or to... To cop my style, you know, it's to, it's fine, but you know, I mean, to play my note, my soul almost note for note, and then go into our ending song, <laughs> that's a little different. <laughs> but he's, you know, he's a nice guy. It's just that I asked him, you know, don't do exactly what we do, because mm -hmm. that'd be just like us playing it twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kids don't want to see something twice in one night. You went and saw Blackmore a little while ago. Yeah, at Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah, a little disappointing. <laughs> You're gonna print this, are you? I just want to know. <laughs> yes, yeah, very disappointing. Yeah. I still can't believe the way that he treated you. I was embarrassed for it. Yeah. Well, some people are that way. You're not that way. No, I don't have no reason to be. I don't see why. It doesn't get him anywhere. I mean, to act like you're God is not going to get you anywhere unless you are. <laughs> Do you hear a lot of people playing guitar like Eddie Van Halen now? Oh, I guess a lot of a lot of people, not San Diego now, but try to, and I think it's actually better that they try to because it comes off a little different. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they play exactly like me, it's going to sound like me. Just like when I grew up playing, you know, I I actually tried playing exactly like some people, but I just couldn't. I think that's how my style developed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, the mere fact that I couldn't play like someone else, so I, I had to do something. I had to come up with something myself. You, you mentioned before that, that your playing is, is getting, is changing as opposed to, to getting better. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's changed from the first album to second. And from second to third, I think it's changed a bit. You know, I'm just playing different licks. Uh, I don't want to call it, call it maturing or anything, <laughs> because it's not, you know, you just... Exposed to different things, you tend to play different now mm -hmm. and then. And right now, I'm playing a little different than I have in the last couple of years. It still sounds like me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I still think you'll be able to pick up on the sound and the, the style right away, but I'm just using a different combination of notes now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you hear anything new that you like? 
<clears throat> Are there any new guitar players that you've listened to you like, or any music? That oh, you like? I love Holdsworth, Alan Holdsworth. He's not up to too much yet, I Well, he's. I'm still into the last album yeah. that he did with Bruce. Yeah. You know, it still amazes me every time I hear it. Yeah, I hear he's got a new band. Oh yeah. With, uh, I think it's Jack Bruce. I'm not positive. Whoa, yeah. wouldn't that be great? Yeah. I'd like to hear him play with Bogut. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Yeah, it's Bogus. He's great. He's yeah. amazing, wasn't he? I love him. He's the best. If I if I ever played bass, that's how I'd want to play. <laughs> Put it that way, you know. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, that's what I don't understand. That he's not really that respected or that famous for being that good. He it's, had... al it's almost like Holdsworth. He's so fucking good, but mm -hmm. he doesn't get the credit. Mm -hmm. It was an attitude thing with him. Oh, yeah? Where Holdsworth was not committed to anything. He really couldn't he care about playing. Want, yeah, he didn't want nothing to do about Tim, it. Tim was a bad boy oh, of yeah. rock for a long time. Oh, he, he was a mean, vicious guy. Yeah. You know? First time I met him was uh, uh, when he was playing with, with the Beck band, Beck Brothers Apathy. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I just did an interview with Beck, you know, who terrified me because I'd never met him. And he yeah. was one of my heroes. Yeah. And, and Jeff was totally cool. And then I went in and I did some with Tim. And I sat down and, you know, I looked at him. I thought he was looking just arrogant for no reason. I thought, well, that, that's not right. You know, so I thought, I said, Tim, how are you doing? I said, okay. I said, well, you know, so tell me what's it like playing with Jeff, you know. And I said, so, well, what do you care? What do you want to for? And the whole thing was like that, you know. And I, I mean, the guy was just, oh, yeah. I was afraid of, you know, if I said something wrong, that he would, he would have, I don't know, what he would have <laughs> Yeah, I swear to God. Well, may, I, maybe he just didn't want to hear about Jeff. Well, I think that was a big part of it, playing in that yeah. band. He didn't have any control. And then, that's well, he, he is so fucking good that I, I, you know, people thinking, oh, you know, isn't it an honor to be playing with Beck? I don't think this, you know, no, yeah, I could have probably put him on edge. Yeah, my, I didn't mean to come out like that because, yeah. I mean, I think he was the best too, you know. Yeah, yeah. But then I met him, God, at least probably a couple of years later. In fact, I did a story for Guitar Player, uh -huh. and uh, the guy was just... The nicest guy you ever want to meet. I mean, uh, both Tim. Both and uh, I said, Tim, you know, you really scared the shit. I mean, the first time I met you, he says, well, you know, says, I, I didn't have control of anything. I didn't know what I was yeah, doing, you know. Pissed off, aggravated. You right. Know. You know, and, and acting like that, I mean, it gets around, you know, and, and people don't want to deal with them, and business people don't want to deal with them, yeah. and record companies. I mean, he couldn't get a deal. Okay. He had a band with a singer from Pieces. From Right. Yeah, I saw him. From Journey. Yeah. I never saw him, but I mean, the singer's hot. Yeah. The guy was star material. And he could, he, you know, nobody would be in the time of day. Sure. And he had Pipe Dream together, which didn't do anything. Like, they were hot, huh? I never heard them. They were good. The album was kind of... Oh, they got an album out? They had an album, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now Tim's just, uh, he's like a session guy. He goes out and he, he hire, you can hire him and that those other guys he's playing with is like a backup section. Oh, yeah. That's what he does. He's in the all kinds of things, but... Uh, but all he can do is no one wants to touch him. I guess. That's sad. The guy is great. He's fucking best. Yeah. It almost seems like the whole back thing hurt him more than did him any good. It could have. It could have. Did you, did you, get, did you get a chance to meet him at the whiskey? Uh, was that thing on <laughs> I wanted to meet him, but I, I didn't really like the band. Yeah. I didn't like the songs they played. I mean, no. They did too much variety. They had no yeah, identity. No, I didn't. It was the bad. bar, I don't like them. I had no. It's so obnoxious. Pe People magazine, you know. Yeah. What the hell for? If his yeah. picture was on it, been great, but it wasn't. I mean, mean, what's he doing? Yeah. And, you know, he just has half assed mind stuff, you know. I mean, he's a nice guy. I've talked with him, you know. He's a really nice guy to talk with, but I, I didn't particularly like the show, so. And, matter of fact, your friend Slozar was the one that said, let's get the hell out yeah. of here. I wanted to wait because I wanted to meet Bogart, you know? Yeah, he's great. great. I looked over and you guys were gone. Yeah, I thought you were know. But I drove and Neil wanted to go, so what the fuck did I do? You did test me, Carmine? Yeah. He's a real nice guy. guy. Yeah. Real nice guy. As a matter of fact, he's rehearsing his new band, his own band, in Pasadena, right down the street from Harvard. Oh, really? So he invited me down there to come by. He was joking around and he's going, hey, you and me have started a band because he won best, best rock drummer and oh, modern oh, drummer, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and he says, by the time I met you, let's get a band together. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun. Uh, but I think Al's better. Yeah? Yeah. Al plays so different. If you hear him play live, 
the place so different. On record, he's respected, you know. And the things Al does to his drums and with his drums mm -hmm. is insane. I mean, that's creative too, you know. It's not just uh, like, when when Al plays live, he just plays different. He has more freedom, mm -hmm. you know. And the, we're like a unit, you know. I always play around him, with him. You know, without Al, I really, I've never actually attempted playing with another drummer. Yeah. So it's like even if he's off a little bit, I'm I'm off right with him. <laughs> you know, he yeah. makes a mistake, I make a mistake right with him. So it's not, it doesn't sound like a mistake. <laughs> Eternal mistakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's like we've played together so long. You know, yeah. It's almost like an ESP bond there, you know. Definitely. But uh, I can sense when he's going out of time a bit and I'm mm -hmm. right there with him. Mm -hmm. but, in a sense, same, you know what I mean? So how much longer will you be rehearsing until, before you go out, up uh, until that point? Uh, right now, we're just, you know, playing, this, getting Mike to play the piano and the bass, and that's actually the song we're rehearsing, everything else is, you know, guitar, bass, drums, mm -hmm. you know, no big deal. But the piano song, we're trying to see, Mike's just going to have to whip it off without warming up, mm -hmm. so we're just trying to get that whipped into shape. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got it down good. He can do it. We just want him to be as hot on that as he is on his base. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want him to just sit down. He's not, he's not going to sit down. He's going to stand up and boogie. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like the sitting down artsy fartsy. Now I'm going <laughs> to play piano stuff and you know, kick out the jams like he does on the base. Yeah. So when will you be back in LA playing the NBA? Uh, summertime, I hope. I mean, I'm never home in the summertime. The only time I'm here is in the winter. I'm getting sick of that. <laughs> this is all I can say. Mm -hmm. yeah. another, another rush now, selling out the forums quick as we did. We were in Japan, we sold it out in an hour and a half. The manager calls up, you know, he goes, Well, guys, guess what? You know what? You sound depressed. No. It's going to sold the form out an hour and a half. Well, what? <laughs> that's like a dream come true, you know. That's that's the same as winning best guitarist, rock guitarist of the year, you know. And I've seen every band go through that place ever since you know I was a kid learning how to play guitar. And there we were, selling it out now and now. Blew me away. It's amazing. Everybody was you know, do another show, do another show. Go, no, no, one's enough. You know, I don't want to jump out and say, hey, we're betting we could be two nights, mm -hmm. where I know we could have. <clears throat> so, I mean, selling out the first night, an hour and a half, I know we could have sold out another one. What the hell for, you know? We don't, we're not the type of band to take the money and run. Mm -hmm. You know, we want it to last. A lot of bands, you know, they start headlining all these outdoor shows. And they, they take the money and run. And then they can't come back and do it again. Mm -hmm. Just overexpose themselves and mm -hmm. just milk the people for everything that's worth. Getting stupid. It's true. You know, we're more into playing and having a good time than the actual money. I mean, granted, we need money to survive and to pull off the shows that we do. But we do put everything we have into them. As opposed to, <clears throat> well, we, we clean up playing live shows. If we use a third of the lighting, a third of the sound, and a third of the crew, but uh, our, our, uh, from the first year to the second year, our production quadrupled, but from, the, from last year to this year, it's doubled, you know, and uh, last year's production is about as big as you'll see, you know, what we use at the forum is what we used all year, and uh, it's about all you'll ever see, and this year's twice as big as that. So, you know, we like to give people as much as we can. So we're taking a chance, you know, with all this recession garbage talk, you know. Mm -hmm. But what the hell? So when they're foreign, you know, they went out with four trucks and they had to cut back on one. You know, because they would just eat taking in the shorts. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think that'll happen with us. We'll just take it in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they cut back because they, they said, wait a minute, we want to make money. We said, fuck that. Mm -hmm. We didn't care too much about making the money on tour. As long as we can survive off the record. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's got to eat. Mm -hmm. We're not out to make it like...